So my topic shortly was the use of print propaganda in the lead up to the 1956 Hungarian uprising. Uh, slightly more expansive, uh, there's an organization called Radio for Europe, which used emigres who had, em who had left Eastern Europe during the post-war period uh, as a form of um, soft power and uh, psychological warfare where they would send radio broadcasts back to their countrymen still living behind the Iron Curtain. This was an American organization which had ties to the CIA. Uh, and in addition to radio, they actually had a branch called the Free Europe Press, which was essentially the print uh, counterpart to the radio sector. And one of the things they did is they sent print propaganda into Eastern Europe. And what I looked at in my thesis was something called Operation Focus, which was a uh, print propaganda that was sent via enormous silver weather balloons uh, into Hungary. Uh, and these leaflets were written by Hungarian emigres living in Germany and the United States. Um, and it was designed to encourage opposition to the Hungarian regime. So one of the uh, focal points of Cold War history and Hungarian history during this time is the 1956 Hungarian uprising, which was a failed uprising against the communist regime, which uh, resulted in the death of thousands of Hungarians and a mass migration movement to Eastern Europe. And what I was looking at is the role that this print propaganda campaign played in developing these uh, political sentiments in the years between 1954 and 1956 in Hungary. So it touches upon uh, a little bit of what was going on in Hungary during the mid to late, the mid 1950s, as well as what the United States' objectives were, as well as what the uh, emigre, Hungarian emigre political climate was like in Germany. So this project actually started in January 2015. Um, Sorry, January 2016. Yeah, um, as a undergraduate, I was actually part of the European Institute's Cold War Archival Research Fellowship. And myself, along with uh, five other fellows, traveled to Abilene, Kansas, the, home t the birthplace of President Eisenhower, where his presidential archive is, for a week in January to conduct research. And my project for this fellowship was originally going to be looking at uh, the experience of Hungarian um, uh, refugees in the immediate aftermath of the 56 Hungarian uprising when they fled to the Western Europe. And I'm flipping through pages and I come across this diagram of a weather balloon which kind of looked like it should have been in a physics textbook more so than a, a box of archival material. And I was really fascinated by this and I started digging into this a little bit more and I just found this wealth of information about this CIA-backed uh, propaganda campaign, and all of these diagrams were part of a very technical study about how to design these weather balloons uh, so that they would reach specific areas in Hungary before deflating and scattering, scattering their leaflets across the countryside. Um, and this really became a pet project of mine. Uh, it sort of fell by the wayside as so I finished up my senior year, and then when it came time to start my master's program, I knew immediately that this is what I wanted to work on for the next year and a half of my life. I was just so fascinated by this. Um, so my research took me all across the country and all across the world, in fact. Um, I went to archives in New York, in Washington, D.C. I went back to Kansas and I went to the Hoover Institution Archives out in Stanford. And then last May, I went to uh, the archives in Budapest. Uh, for about 10 days, again with the European Institute. My research process uh, really focused quite heavily upon primary source material. There isn't a ton of secondary source material devoted to this leaflet operation. It sort of folds it in with stuff that Radio Free Europe was doing at the time, or just the 1956 Hungarian uprising more broadly. So a lot of my work involved digging through boxes and boxes of material in the archives and looking for hints of this propaganda campaign in uh, other texts related to what Radio Free Europe and the Free Europe Press was doing at the time. So a lot of it was, you know, looking for stuff and not finding much, feeling a little bit 
feeling a little bit discouraged, but I just had to keep going until I got to uh, the archives in Budapest, where I actually found interviews conducted with Hungarians who had emigrated to Germany and Austria, where they were asked specifically about these balloon campaigns. And I get these amazing descriptions of people watching these balloons uh, floating across the countryside and hundreds of pieces of paper raining down across their little t uh, their little town in western Hungary or in the streets of Budapest and what it was like to go and collect all these leaflets, reading them, sharing them, hiding them from the police, seeing people arrested, seeing children searched at school or being chased out of the country by the police for picking up and reading these leaflets and sharing them. Um, so that really started, that was really the core of my project, getting these uh, first-hand accounts of what people had experienced. And then uh, this other place that was really helpful for me was the Hoover Institution Archives in Stanford, which is where most, if not all, Radio Free Europe's documents ended up after the organization sort of moved their operations out of Germany. And there I actually found a lot of studies produced by the uh, U.S. Office of Radio Free Europe about the effectiveness of Operation Focus, um, about what their objectives were, some of the communications back and forth between the Americans and the Hungarians working on this project. Um, and so I spent a very frantic week there just going through as many boxes as possible. And I came back from that research trip with about 5,000 photos. So that was a really, uh, that was a really fruitful trip. And then a uh, totally lucky serendipitous, uh, the largest collection, I think, of material related directly to Operation Focus was actually right here at Columbia. Columbia's Rare Books and Manuscript Library uh, had a collection of papers donated by a guy named Imri Kovac, um, who had actually was a Hungarian emigre and helped write a lot of the materials for the uh, for Operation Focus. And so there, I found uh, hard copies of every single leaflet and newspaper that had been dropped in Hungary. Uh, in I guess they he must have been sent them as you know, proof of what he had helped to work on in the late 50s, and he just put everything in boxes. And then on top of that, not only did I have the final text, but I had all of these interim drafts of what they had meant to write, as well as communications between himself and his American counterparts in Radio for Europe. Uh, and I just stumbled upon that. I figured I'm here at Columbia. I might as well look at the rare books and manuscript library, see what they have. And I just came across this absolute wealth of knowledge uh, so that was a really great find.